inverse the domain and range? Uh, we're going to find the we're going to find f inverse and then find the domain and range for both of these. So, the graph of this first of all, let's just graph that real quick on a on a um, line so you can see what that looks like. Remember a logarithm function. The base graph looks like the the base logarithm graph. I'll do this in in black like this. It goes through one zero and it goes up like that and it approaches the y axis. As a as a vertical asymptote, and so what when, when I what I'm doing on this one is I'm shifting it, doing using transformations. I'm shifting it. What is that? Minus four does what to it? To the left, to the right. To the right four, and what does the plus one do? Up one. Up one. Very good. So I'm taking this and I'm going to the right four. One, two, three, four, and so now my asymptote is that line, which is what x equals. Four. There's my asymptote. That's going to help me with my domain and range, right? And then it's going up one. So this point, instead of being there, is actually not there anymore. It's one up from there. If this is one right here, it's one up. So it's going to do this, like that, and like that. So what's for the for f of x? There's f of x. What's the domain? Let's do that real quick. The domain is from. Four, to infinity. four, not including four, so leave the open circle open bracket to infinity. And what's the range? Negative infinity to. It's all it's all real numbers. Negative infinity to positive infinity, right? All real numbers. Okay, so that's that graph. Now let's let's find the graph of this other function. I'll I'll do this one in whatever that pukey greenish or yellow color is. Every question. Yeah. So just to clarify again, this this original black graph that I here have there, that original dotted line is the graph of the log base 3 of x. And that could have been log base 5 of x, it could have been log base log base e of x, which is ln of x, it could have been a lot of things as long as it was, because it's going to go through the point 1, 0. That's the point that all of these go through, and then the shape, it might be a little bit wider, thicker, a little bit stretcher, but it's going through that point and it's and it has a vertical asymptote of the y axis. So this right here over here that minus 4 and that plus 1 just transformed that original black graph. That's your basic graph and it transformed it. Now we're going to graph this one um, the inverse function. And remember the inverse function is a is a flip over the line y equals x. That's one way you could do it. You could just have this line y equals x right here. And you could flip all these points. So this point right here, remember what that point right there was? Mm -hmm. It was 5, comma, 1. one. So this point's going to be Negative five. 1. Oh. No, it's going to be 1, comma, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be 1, comma, 5. That's, see how that's a reflection over the line y equals x? It's mm -hmm. not a very good line y equals x, but that's a reflection over the line y equals x right there that point right there, mm -hmm. 1 comma 5. Instead of having a, an asymptote right here, at x equals 4, the asymptote is now, instead of vertical, it's horizontal. going to be horizontal, and it's going to be at y equals 4. And instead of going this right here, which went that way, now it's going to be going this way, and it's going to approach... Negative. My asymptote to negative infinity, my horizontal asymptote. Now that's the graphical way of doing it. There's an algebraic way of doing it as well. I'll show you that in a second. So, but let's go ahead and finish this. So f prime or f uh, inverse has of x has a domain of. Notice how the domain is the same as the range of this. It's from infinity to negative infinity to infinity, and the range is from four to infinity. The domain and the range just were flipped. Because remember, in inverse, you're changing the x's and the y's. The x's become y's, y's become x's. That's what an inverse does. All right, so that's the answer. But now let's do it algebraically. So here's how you would do this exact same thing algebraically. So I'm going to try to... Um, actually, I'll just go to the next page. Log. Let's see if I can remember what this was. So my red graph was f of x was log base 3 of x minus 4 plus 1. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's take the inverse 
the inverse graph, we find the inverse graph by switching the x and the y. So now I've got x equals log base 3 of y minus 4 plus 1. But now I have to solve for y. Okay, so to solve for y, let's subtract 1. So x minus 1 equals log base 3 of y minus 4. Now let's convert this logarithmic equation into a exponential. exponential. What does logarithm mean? It means 3. This means 3 to this power to the x minus 1 equals this right here, y minus 4. And now, let's add 4 to both sides. Okay, so let's look at this graph now, and let's graph this the same way that we graphed the other one. Let me, let me go to a new page. A y, which was actually my inverse function, equals 3 to the x minus 1 plus 4. Now let's talk about the graphs of exponential functions. What's the base graph of this function right here? Again, I'm going to do this in black. What's the base graph of that? y equals what? 3 to the x. And what does y equals 3 to the x do? It goes to the point zero, 0, 1. It approaches 0 as it goes toward infinity, as x goes toward infinity, and it and it goes up exponentially to Why the right. Why is it 0, 1? I thought it was 1, 0. It's 0, 1. This point is 0, comma, 1. When I plug in 0 for x, what's 3 to the 0? 1. 1. That point's always going to be on your base exponential graph. Whether it was 5 to the x, e to the x, 10 to the x, it doesn't matter. When x is 0, what's, 10, what's anything to the x? 1. 1. That's why it always goes through that point right there. Your base graph always goes through that point. Okay? So now let's take this graph and let's do our transformations. What does this minus 1 do to it? Shift it to the Shifts right. Shifts it to the right 1. So now my graph is to the right 1. And what does the plus 4 do to it? Up 4. Shifts it up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's that point. And what happened? What else shifted up 4? The horizontal aspect. Now my horizontal aspect. Oops, I should change my color here. My horizontal asymptote, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my horizontal asymptote right there. It's at y equals 4 now instead of y equals 0 because everything shifted. And the graph goes like that. There's my graph. All right? So that's, that's how you would have done it algebraically and then graph it. You could have done it either way. You could have either done it. Algebraic way. The, the algebraic way is nice, but it's, you have to kind of understand how graphically to, to understand inverses as well. Okay, so that's a long way of explaining that problem. Hopefully you understand it now.